Don't forget, they tried to hold gold down in the 1960s with the London gold pool. They tried to hold gold down at $35 per ounce. And that, that fails, uh, failed in the end. And, and we saw gold rocket up from $35 to over $80, $800 in, in, in a period of, uh, within a decade. And I expect something similar to happen one day in, in the precious metals markets again, and especially watch silver. Silver is trading at 50% of its 19.8 high. Uh, silver should be trading uh, north of $100, and it will happen one day, and it will move fast. By 2025, just over 50% of the global demand for silver is projected to come from this industry. According to estimates from the Silver Institute, global demand has risen to 1.242 billion ounces against a supply of 1.004 billion ounces, creating the second largest deficit in the last 20 years by the end of the year. As an author and entrepreneur, Willem Middelkoop has made significant contributions to discussions surrounding commodities and geopolitics. While seeing a similar future for precious metals, Willem highlights the London Gold Pool 1960s failure and gold surge to $800. The price of gold rose from $35 to $850 an ounce between 1971 and 1980, in line with the oil crises, galloping inflation, and international conflicts. The years 1974 and 1979 were particularly significant for the price of gold. Meanwhile, Willem expects gold price surge in various currencies, including U.S. dollar. Gold prices are on track to rally to all-time highs in 2024 on the back of tapering interest rates and looming recessionary fears that elevate its role as a safe haven asset. Spot gold prices hit a record intraday high of $2,072.5 on August 7, 2020, according to data from Refinitiv. Analysts who spoke to CNBC say they could surpass that level and push beyond the record. Furthermore, Willem also views BRICS unity against the West and pursuit of financial alternatives as a positive driver. The BRICS group of big emerging economies has announced the admission of six new members in an attempt to reshape the global world order and provide a counterweight to the U.S. and its allies. From the beginning of next year, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Argentina, the UAE, and Ethiopia will join the current five members Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, it was announced at a summit in Johannesburg on Thursday. More than 40 countries had expressed interest in joining BRICS, and 23 formally applied to join the club, which already represented a quarter of the global economy and 40% of the world's population. Now we are presenting you the glimpses of Willem Middlecoop insights from his recent interview with Soar Financially. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, we request you to subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. Well, actually, very happy. I just told you I came down from a meeting downstairs with a very uh, wealthy uh, individual, a uh, uh, private investor, and I showed him the gold price, the chart from... Um, uh, the late 1990s and I, I pointed to the four double top around 2000 in the last uh, two, well last 15 years and I expect gold to break out in dollars as well and gold has broken out in many currencies including the Chinese currency uh, most of the time uh, gold breaks out in dollars that's the last one to break out and, and, and don't forget you have the usual suspects on Wall Street who try to keep gold down gold is the anti-dollar Gold needs to be below $2,000. Yesterday, one of these traders was convicted. Uh, he received a sentence of two years in jail because of manipulation and spoofing in the gold market. So there are always forces at work who try to keep you down. But there was um, a bit too much hype around the gold-backed uh, BRICS currency. Uh, I helped a bit by starting that hype, uh, tweeting about it. Because the Russians were stating we'll introduce a gold backed BRICS currency. Um, now, it now turns out that there is, there is a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, don't forget that the BRICS, th these are five independent countries and they all have their own agenda. So Russia might like to do something else than China, but they have one common interest and th their, their common interest is that they are fed up with the Western system. They're fed up with the Western double standards. They're fed up with the Western hypocrisy. So they are trying to, well, they are actually inviting all these countries who didn't join the Western sanctions against Russia. Uh, there are 140 countries who didn't join the Western sanctions. These countries in Middle America, South, uh, South America, the Middle East, Asia, Africa, 
they don't support the Western sanctions, not because they're friends of Putin, but because they're fed up with the double standards, because we didn't apply sanctions against the US when they invaded Iraq or Afghanistan. So you have this huge, well, combination, this huge group of companies who are not very friendly to the West, who would like to build their own system, who don't want to be uh, a victim of uh, the well, the weaponization of the dollar. So they'll try to trade without using the dollar. So they might use the Chinese yuan or um, maybe in a few years time, there will be a common BRICS currency. But the most important thing to get away uh, from all of this is that there's competition, strong competition. There's comp competitive tension in the world now. And that's very good for the world of commodities. because Gold has been a surprise this week given the early rise in U.S. yields as well as strength in the dollar index, DXY, for the majority of the week. During the interview, Willem expects a strong market and suggests silver might have already bottomed, potentially benefiting mining markets in the coming months. Silver's recent strength could be just the beginning, and the technical picture has turned bullish for both the gray metal and gold, according to analysts at Action Forex. Previous market bottoms brought strong gains. Gains, Willem envisions a rally as expecting notable gains in gold mining shares, possibly rising in coming months. Silver mining shares would likely go along with the metals price for a bullish ride and could outperform silver appreciation on a percentage basis as the world depends on the miners to close the supply-demand gap. Buying gold and silver on price dips has been the optimal approach over the past years. Let's get back to interview. The number one indicator I follow is the, the dollar index. And the dollar has been quite strong in uh, recent months. And once the dollar tops, uh, has topped, I think you will see this turn in the market, especially for gold and silver. And if you look at the dollar index now, it's on the verge of topping. Um, and I think um, especially when the market thinks the Fed might be done with raising interest rates because the economy is getting very hard hit with the high interest rates. So we're on the brink of a world recession. Um, uh, China is slowing down very strongly. Europe is starting to get into a depression here in the Netherlands. We have, a, sorry, a recession, not a depression here in the Netherlands. We have a new recession. Um, so uh, central bankers uh, will someday stop with raising interest rates. And I think that might be the trigger you are looking for. I've said in previous interviews that uh, I expected uh, a very strong market. Uh, and also, I expect the precious metals market to bottom very soon. Silver might have bottomed already. Silver is leading. Silver has been leading in the uh, rally in, 2000, uh, in 2022. So silver seems to bottom first and gold will follow. So I think this is the time when you have some real bargains in the market, especially since the volumes are so low and markets are depressed and people are depressed. Uh, so um, we're not that negative. Uh, actually, the, the next few months might be quite surprisingly good for, for, the, for the mining market. We had a real bottom of the markets in commodities in 2016. And then we had a retest in March 2020. Uh, both of those years uh, brought a spectacular gains of 70 uh, to 85 percent. And then we had this longer downturn correction after the strong 2020. And this correction from a technical perspective is the move to an Elliott wave. And after move to, when that's over and it seems to be almost over, then you get a very strong uh, phase three of, 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 of the, the rally. Uh, of the uh, the longer uh, uh, charting pattern. And, and that could be a much stronger move than we've seen in 2020 and also might take a bit longer because you might remember the, the bull market after the March 22 COVID crash, it only took us six, seven months and then the rally was over. And I, I expect a much longer, stronger bull market, which might take several years. And I wouldn't be surprised when the GDX, uh, as an example for the uh, mining shares, the gold mining shares, will move up 50 to 100 percent within the next 12 to 18 months. Looking ahead, the future for precious metals seems promising, especially considering the projected rise in global demand for silver from various industries. How might these unfolding developments impact the future of precious metals and the broader economic landscape? 
Share your thoughts in comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to show your support towards our channel by giving this video thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos covering more interesting topics. Thank you for watching.